Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Remember LAN parties? They still happen, believe it or not. Uh, I was never actually invited to LAN parties, but I remember staying up late in the computer labs uh, on uh, my uh, university's campus where uh, people would play Doom uh, and, 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 and go through all the levels. And I remember watching, but I never really got into it, uh, even back then. I remember playing Doom 2 over an IPX, SPX network. Uh, we basically connected two 33-6 modems across campus. We dialed into each other's computer, and uh, network played. Uh, that was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but I never really set up a game server. Never operated a game server, certainly. Uh, but would I know where to begin? Well, I've got a few tips, in case you're wondering. We've got five tips on operating a game server published on LockerGnome.com. The link is in the video's description. Uh, the highlights, well, make sure the player slots are set up correctly. Seems to go without saying, but, uh, you know, if you if you don't have the structure uh, to be able to handle how many players are going to be coming in, you're asking for a nightmare. Uh, do you have a decent internet connection? Well, that's another thing, you know, especially if you're setting up the server through which all your players are going to connect, uh, you know, you may have a problem. Uh, can your ISP handle it? Can the network handle the traffic? And Granted, it may not be tons of traffic, but uh, is your ISP going to play nicely, especially if you're setting up a server at home? Keep that in mind. Does the server need to be on all the time? Uh, do you need to have a dedicated computer for that server? These are certain questions that you have to ask yourself. Uh, are there enough users to require staff? So when I've uh, participated with uh, network games, uh, specifically those running through uh, someone's server, whether it was in their home or uh, an office, uh, you know, usually if it's just a few people, it's not a big deal. A computer may be on all the time, it may not be. But uh, when it scales to the point where people are on it all the time, you may need moderators or people from the community who can help keep an eye on what's happening. Staff, people to help you. Uh, and I, I think this is, it's crucial for any community, uh, especially community with high levels of engagement. You need help. I could not do the things that I do on a regular basis with Locker Gnome and everything that you see before you without help from others. People uh, who are within the Locker Gnome organization or volunteers from the community who are very helpful and instrumental in making sure that things are going well. Uh, and then, of course, remember, and this is probably the biggest thing to, to remember, uh, no, not about specs on the server. Uh, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Uh, this is probably the biggest challenge uh, you're going to face when uh, putting together something for a group of people. Not everyone is going to have the same idea on how uh, that server should be run or operated. Uh, it is a natural flow of communities. It's like an ebb and flow. And think of a game a, a server as sort of a, a nexus point uh, for community. So when you put someone in control or someone who is in control wields that control and beats people over the head with it, uh, they need to learn that's probably not the best way to wield power. Uh, you know, this has taken 15 years of experience for me to understand, uh, and I'm telling you this right now, finding, uh, you know, the right... Uh, element to not just have all the right hardware and software in place, but the right people in place is uh, is going to ultimately spell the difference between success or failure, even with uh, operating a game server. So uh, any other game server tips you want to share, feel free to comment or leave a comment on the article on LockerGnome.com.